Kathy and Elliot Lewis on stage. Kathy Lewis, Elliot Lewis, two of the most distinguished names in radio, appearing each week in their own theater, starring in a repertory of transcribed stories of their own and your choosing. Radio's foremost players in radio's foremost play. Ladies and gentlemen, Elliot Lewis. Good evening. May I present my wife, Kathy. Good evening. Good drama, and I'm using that word to mean comedy or melodrama or satire or whatever. Good drama is based on conflict. Like a football game in its simplest terms. Or a troubled man at war with himself. Or two handsome young men who want to marry the same beautiful young lady. Or a father and a son fighting for an empire. Or just two people who believe differently. A young man named Don Yarrow came to see us with an idea for an on-stage play. It was a play about a conflict in ideas. A conflict between a young man and his father-in-law. We thought it was a good play, and we're going to do it tonight. It's called... The Dreamers. We live in a quiet town, Jeff and me. Not so small that it's so stuffy that you can't breathe and can't call your soul your own, and not so big that it has no, well, character. I guess you know what I mean about big towns. Ours is a quiet town, just the right size. And it suits us, Jeff and me. Now I've made it sound as if it didn't suit Dad, and that's not true, and I didn't mean it to sound that way at all. Dad's lived here all his life. But with him, it would be all the same wherever he lived. When you go around with your feet off the ground and your head in the clouds, what difference could it make? A dreamer doesn't call any place home. There he goes now, down to the cellar. I wouldn't mind so much if there was something practical about what he does down in the cellar, but there isn't. It's all such a waste of time. Well, after all, Dad has nothing but time. Well, that's not the point. It's the principle of the thing, a waste of time and money. Oh. Name one of these inventions of his that ever amounted to anything. Name one, that's all. Well... And does he have to walk around as if he was the only human being left alive? It's different when you get to be Dad's age, Jeff. Isn't it, though? But isn't that exactly what I'm complaining about? A man his age has no reason to have things on his mind anymore. Your father's all through the worry and the struggling times. When a man gets to be his age, it's only fair he should relax and be himself. All I want is that he should be that way, the way he's supposed to be. Yes. That's what annoys me. He makes such a production out of everything. Anyone would think he was the breadwinner around here. Now, Jeff, that's not fair. That's ignoble, even. Well, you think I don't know that? That annoys me, too, to think I should think like that. how it was. And I knew what was really needling Jeff wasn't what he said it was. Not exactly. It wasn't that he hated to think of Dad wasting time and money or behaving around the house as if he owned it. What Jeff couldn't take was the sense of Dad never being quite with us. Of him walking around with his feet off the ground and his head in the clouds. Jeff never could stand the dreamer. Anything or anyone he couldn't quite get to grips with frightened him a little and when Jeff got frightened, he brooded. And when he brooded, he got hard to live with. You've been talking about this movie all week, and now that we're going, you're not even ready. I'm ready. I'm all set to go. Well, what are you sitting there for? Waiting for Dad. Waiting for Dad? He's coming with us. Oh, no. He never comes with us. This time he is. Says he wants to. You mean he knows what he wants? Yes. All right. If he says he wants to, he wants to. Then where is he? He'll be up in a minute. Well, he'll hate the picture. Go to sleep, most likely. What he wants. Well, it seems like kind of a waste to go to a movie and then sleep. Here he comes. There you are, Pop. All set? All set, my dear. You sure you want to come? Yes. Okay, let's go. Wait a minute. Don't, don't close the door, Jeff. What's the matter? I forgot to leave the light on. Oh, that's nonsense. You think that would fool a burglar? It's done it up to now. There. That wouldn't fool anyone. It's better than nothing. What's the matter, Pop? Yes? 
you look so strange. Mm. I just had an idea. Oh, come on. We'll miss the newsreel. That was where it really started, then and there. If I thought I'd had a situation on my hands before, I was wrong. This was it. This was what the writing on the wall had been all about. We came back from the movie that night, and the light was burning, and we had not been burglarized, just as I thought. But it didn't satisfy Dad. He wouldn't drink his hot malted milk, had to go down to the cellar right then and there and begin work on this new idea he had. I heard him sneak up to bed around four in the morning. Lucky thing, Jeff was asleep. As a matter of fact, he might have forgotten all about it if something hadn't happened a few evenings later, after dinner. What on earth is that, you suppose? Uh, it's coming from the cellar. I'm going down there. No, no, Jeff, don't. It was please. shaking the floor. The first thing we know, there'll be cracks in the walls and the pictures will all fall down. I hope not. That's very unlucky, pictures falling down. Well, I'm going down there. This time he's gone too far. No, don't, Jeff. Leave him alone. What, whatever it was, it didn't work. The noise has stopped, has yeah, it? Yeah, well, you know your father. If at first you don't succeed, keep slugging away. I don't want the house coming down around our ears, even if you do. Read your newspaper, dear. You exaggerate so. I exaggerate, huh? Yeah. Is a loud noise. What do you suppose it is? Whatever it is, there's no harm in it. That did it. Yeah? I've had enough. I'm sorry. I've had all of this I can take. You're not going down to He's it. got to be made to stop. Jeff, I, I, listen, I wish you'd just try to understand. Hey, Pop. Oh, uh, what is it? Jeff, Jeff, listen, darling, now don't. Pop, don't. what's the big idea? I can't hear you. Come on down with me if you like, Jane, but don't try to stop me. Look at that thing. What do you suppose you... Come down here. Not just a minute, Pop. I have a it's right to... It's not ready yet. What? I don't want you to see it before it's finished. See what? Why, what you came down here to see, of course. Oh, yeah, but what is it? You'll find out soon enough. Now, look, Pop, I didn't come down here to see anything. You just said you did. I came down here to find out what the racket was. Yes. Whatever that thing is, does it have to be so noisy? My boy, that's the whole idea. <laughs> That's the whole idea. <laughs> I think your father is going nuts. I wonder if he is. Well, you heard what he said. That's the whole idea. That it should make that strange noise. What kind of talk is that? I tell you, he's going off his rocker. Perhaps. Yeah? Well, I was going to say, perhaps he hasn't quite got it right yet. Got what right yet? You know, I wonder if he's done something important at last. What? He said we should find out soon enough. Perhaps we shall know. Tomorrow. Tomorrow, your father and me are going to have a long talk, Jane. A long talk. Oh, Jeff, please. For my sake, don't be too hard on him. <laughs> You are listening to Kathy and Elliot Lewis on stage. Tonight's play, The Dreamer. All of us at some time are faced with a challenge, and the man in uniform is no exception. One of the greatest challenges faced by the military was the fight to find the cause and prevention of yellow fever. In 1900, Major Walter Reed of the U.S. Army Medical Corps was named chairman of a committee to investigate the cause and transmission of the disease. The committee was assigned to conduct its work in Cuba, where yellow fever was then quite severe. There, together with Majors William Gorgas and James Carroll, and Drs. Jesse Lazier and Aristides Agramonte, Major Reed began his experiment. After a lengthy cleanup campaign, the committee reached the conclusion that the fever was carried and transmitted by the Stegomyar mosquito, a theory previously held by a Scotch doctor, Charles Finley, but ignored. Now, with Dr. Finley's help, Major Reed hoped to prove the theory was correct. When it became known among the American troops stationed in Cuba that Major Reed was looking for a way to test the theory, several of the enlisted men volunteered to act as human guinea pigs for the dangerous experiment. In the course of the experiment, 
Some of the volunteers and Dr. Lazier died from injections of the disease. But their sacrifice eventually brought an end to yellow fever in Cuba. And as the years went by, in a major part of the civilized world, once more, the military had successfully met a challenge. It happened the very next day. It was after dinner. We heard him coming. Here he comes now. Yes. Time I put him straight, my mind is made up. I'm not going to mince words. Now listen, Pop. Yes. What in the world is that? You may well ask, son. You may well ask. Well, don't put it on the table. You'll start Oh, for... don't trust me, boy. In a few weeks' time, all new furniture for this house, all the tables you want. What is that? This, son, is your old dad's latest gift to society. This invention of mine is going to burst upon a grateful and an astonished world with all the brilliance of a new major constellation. I call it the Handy Home Step and Tread Simulator for the discouragement of prowlers. in the world? Why, Dad, that's perfectly wonderful. What's it supposed to be? <clears throat> this machine, operated by a simple clockwork mechanism with an easy reach of the householder's pocket, has been designed to simulate the sound of a person walking up and down stairs. After a single cranking, it will reproduce this sound for a period of three and one half hours, the time taken by an average length double feature program. Ah, uh, I see. Gone are the days of leaving the light on to scare away prowlers. Now, when you leave your home empty in the evening, all you have to do is to crank up this simple appliance, and any passing burglar has the impression that the house is occupied. Uh, but why, why not just leave the light on? Oh, my dear, that loose has been known to the prowling fraternity since private property was invented. That's just the trouble, you see. We have not kept pace with the march of events, lost sight of the law of diminishing returns. It's time to start outguessing the burglars. Leaving the light on always seems to work. Oh, that doesn't prove anything, my dear. Besides, I know as a matter of statistics that in many thousands of cases it has not worked. It has only provided illumination for the burglars to work by. Whereas this machine... Just listen. You see? Of course, a few bugs yet. Um, I have just one question. Yes, son? You're not serious, are you? You can sneer, my boy. You will see. That's all. You will see. Dad smoothed out the bug in his contraption, got some backers from among his old cronies, and put it on the market. What happened after that seemed like a dream. The machine sold in its thousands. Overnight, you might say, we were rich. And Jeff took it badly as I had feared he would. What? Why should this happen? In fact, how can it have happened? It is all very sudden. It's fantastic, impossible. Out of this world, there is no rhyme or reason in it. Uh, That's not strictly true, son. There is some reason, but uh, more imagination. I know I have no imagination. You don't have to tell me that, especially now. Uh, Dad didn't mean that, Jeff, dear. All right, I know how this makes me look. I was wrong. I said it couldn't happen. Yeah. Well, it has happened, and I guess it makes me look pretty silly. Well, why is that, my boy? Now I don't need to work anymore. I'm just a spare part around here. Jeff, that's not true. Of course not. Well, you could bet your sweet lives it's not true. Working is what I know, and I'm going to go right on working, winning the bread. You can have your cake, you two, but don't expect me to eat it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh. Dear, yeah, he doesn't understand. Oh, don't worry about it, Jane, my dear. You come round. But poor Jeff didn't come around, and at first things got worse. It seemed like we couldn't help but go on getting richer and richer all the time. And the richer we got, the angrier poor Jeff became. You could see he was tortured by my father's success. Not because he was jealous of it, because I don't think Jeff ever wanted that kind of a success, but because he couldn't understand how it had happened. If you want to know the truth, it was over his head. 
and this made him afraid. And then, of course, he got impatient with himself and angry. But finally, something went wrong. I can't understand it. The sales have fallen off almost to nothing. Oh, well, Dad, never mind. Uh, my machine is not a failure. I have never had a dissatisfied customer. But people are not buying them anymore. Perhaps you should advertise. Oh, all that's taken care of. Doesn't make any difference. Mm, I'm worried. Are you really? Well, no, not really, but I would like to know why. A little while after that, Jeff and I went out for the evening, and Dad was alone in the house. He went to bed early. doing in this house? Now, let's go. No, 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 wait. 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 I want to talk with you. Please, wait. Please, I, I, I must talk with you. Oh. What's with you, Pop? Tell me, are you burglars? Well, we, we, well, 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 yes, in a way. Well, then, please tell me, would you enter a house in which you heard footsteps going up and down the stairs? What? Oh, that, that would, would depend, wouldn't it, John? It would depend on what? Oh, on, on whether it was really footsteps or one of the machines. You mean... Then you know about the machine? Why, bless you, yes. It's like leaving a light burning. You get used to tricks like that. The law of diminishing returns. Pardon me? Oh, nothing. <laughs> I should like to thank you, my friend. You've, you've been of great service to me. <laughs> Happy to oblige. <laughs> Isn't that right, Joe? Hey, uh, you may uh, rest assured I shall say nothing. I'll go off with it. Yeah, well, we scratch your back and... Exactly, we... exactly. Uh, can you find your own way out? Oh, sure, yeah. Well, good night, Bob. Uh, good, good night. Good night. Come on, Joe. Let's try next door. Well, I have it. I have it. I have it. Later, he said he thought it might have been a dream, and really, I think it was. I think that half the things that happened to Dad were a dream, either waking or sleeping. But at the time, we didn't know about it, Jeff and me. Dad didn't say anything, and things went on about the same as they had been going, that is, getting worse. The money for the sales had stopped coming in, and of course, Jeff noticed it. See? Yes. I told you so. Yes. Just a flash in the pan. I just so. as well, I decided to go right on working, just as if nothing had happened. You're so right, Jeff. That dear. crazy gimmick. Yeah. You see, honey, it comes back to what I've said all along. It doesn't matter what. You have to have a practical attitude. Being practical, that's what your father doesn't understand. I know. He made some money, sure. But then there's the bills. Materials, labor, advertising. The net profit won't amount to so much. And what now, huh? Huh? <laughs> Where would we go from here if we had to rely on that crazy gizmo? <laughs> Just as well you went right on working, Jeff, darling. Oh, you're darn right there. <laughs> What's that? Oh, dear. He's at it again. Jeff? If it was me, I could take a hint. But you take some people, they never learn. Yes. Not your old man, no. Yes, now be patient. It's his whole life. It may be, but it's ruining mine. Yes. What do you suppose he's gotten into his head this time? Oh, no. Please, no! He didn't leave us in doubt for very long. I had met Jeff after work and we'd done the marketing. It was on the table when we came in, and Dad was waiting. Jeff was very quiet. He's surprising. All right, Pop. What is it now? Ah, uh, uh, it looks awfully complicated. Well, it's uh, basically simple, of course. Clockwork? Uh, uh, clockwork, as before. Ooh, wait until you hear this. Are you ready? What do you think? 
It's called the Combined Home Companion. It can be manufactured to cater to individual tastes. For example, you can have canasta instead of bread. Also, it can be made in simpler forms, incorporating selected features. Uh, there'd be a man whistling in bath combined with dog barking downstairs, or young people dancing in the living room combined with glee club rehearsing up there. You, 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 you're going to put it on the market then? Oh, all of them, my boy, a whole lot. But, the... but surely, didn't you learn anything from the failure of the other thing? Don't you know that nobody... That's just it, I did learn. Law of diminishing returns. Time now for the follow-up. And this is it. The logical development. Have you any idea what it would cost to put these into production? Well, the profits will be enormous. It's not practical. Neither was the other, but it made money. It, 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 it's, it's fantastic, absurd. The, the public will love it. They will buy millions of these. The public loves that. This isn't a gadget. It's a complicated machine. It's expensive, too. Oh, not so expensive. A bigger and better gadget. That's what the public wants. Just listen. Take it away. Take it away! <laughs> It was a terrible time for Jeff. During the following weeks, I watched what was happening to him. He kept saying how sure he was that this time my father had really gone off the rails. When Dad sank all his capital in the manufacture of the new machines, Jeff despaired and said that it would be the ruin of us all. He wouldn't eat. He got thin and sort of haggard and careless with his shaving. But I could see that what was really haunting him was the thought that maybe, after all, the machines would be a success. That something he didn't understand would rear up and slap him down and prove him wrong. The danger was terrible. That all his ideas of sense and nonsense would be toppled over. But I was afraid that if that happened to Jeff, he would fall into a sort of dreadful melancholy. Well, gradually we could see that the machines were going to be a success. I think I'd known it all along. The money Dad laid out started coming back. I was afraid he was going to make a fortune. And then one morning in the rain, the little man came. Oh, yes? Good morning. Is your husband at home? Well, no. Uh, can I... Oh, uh... it's all right, my dear. I was expecting this gentleman. Oh, won't you uh, please step this way? <laughs> Thank you. I'm afraid my shoes are very wet. Quite all right. Uh, I'll uh, speak with the gentleman in there, Jane. Uh, uh, we shan't be very long. It was all so strange. Some man I had never seen before, but he seemed to know my father, or Dad seemed to know him. He had a fat briefcase and looked very official, like an income tax assessor. I went over to the closed door, and I listened I couldn't hear what they were saying. We were in there almost a half hour, and then the door opened, and the little man came out, followed by my father. They were all smiles and bows and good nature. So whatever it had been all about, it had gone off all right. Good day, madam. Thank you for your hospitality. Ah, oh, quite all right. I'm so sorry about my feet. Feet? So wet. The rain, you know. It's quite all right. Good day, then. And good day to you, sir. Uh, good day. It's been a pleasure to do business with you. <laughs> Eh, uh, um, terrible weather, terrible. Yes, it certainly is. Well, I dare say you're busy, my dear. Father? Dad? Uh, uh, yes, my dear. What did he want? Want? The little man. Oh, him? Yes, him. Uh, oh, well, yes, I... I plan to keep it to tell you both when Jeff comes home. Oh. Who was he? Mm. He was a union representative. A union representative? What union? Associated burglars and second story men. What? Well, what in the world did he want with you? Well, I guess I may as well tell you. He came with a proposition. Dad, you didn't do business with them. Well, in a manner of speaking, I did, but not in the way you think. Oh, I should hope not. He pointed something out to me, something I hadn't thought of. You see, these machines of mine are fairly expensive. And as they become more and more complicated, they will get more expensive still. They will be beyond the means of the average family. I see. And, uh, as this fellow pointed out, the men whom he represents will alter their sphere of operations to meet the changed conditions. Instead of robbing the more comfortably situated, they will turn their attentions to the average man. It's uh, happening already. What's that 
Oh. Yes, I know. Well, there, there was nothing I could do but agree to stop production. He was very nice about it all, and I'm sure he regretted the way things have turned out. Quite sincerely, I would say. Well, but you, will you mind? No. No, I don't think so. After a while, things will be as they were. People will leave their lights on as they did before. Dad, do you think you, you could sort of uh, um, hint that your machines have failed again? You know, so he won't... <laughs> all right, I'll do that. <laughs> yes, after all, it does have its amusing side. <laughs> So Jeff never did find out, and after a while he got over the whole thing, and everything was fine. A few weeks ago he said to me... <laughs> Listen to him down there, puttering away. I guess he's happy enough. I guess what you don't know about life, real life that is, you don't miss. Huh? And so they've learned to live together. Jeff had a bad stare, and it taught him, I suppose, to make allowances. With Dad, it would be all the same wherever he lived. When you go around with your feet off the ground and your head in the clouds, what difference could it make? A dreamer doesn't call any place home. There he goes now, down to the cellar. What he does down there, we don't ask. And he doesn't tell us. Not anymore. Dreamer, starring Kathy and Elliot Lewis on stage. And so the realist and the dreamer learned to live with each other. And you believed it because Joseph Kearns was kind enough to rejoin us to play Kathy's father. Herb Vigran was the burglar, and Byron Kane was the head man with the burglars. <laughs> Join us next week when On Stage returns with Kathy and Elliot Lewis in another play we know you will enjoy. This has been a United States Armed Forces radio and television service.